Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you on the video? The paid request this time for Edward. Thank you so much for that. Really do appreciate it, man. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for two more episodes of South Park, season 11, season 11, episodes 12 and 13. Now, episode 12 is the third part of the three part arc Imagination Land. Whereas, like I said before, you tell there's a little bit more finesse into this, there's a, a little bit more crisper in terms of animation. Uh, at least that's what it seemed like to me. It's a little bit more ambitious because of the story arc of there's the terrorists had blown up a wall and all the evil fictitious characters are attacking the good fictitious characters and then Butters is the key to it all. Meanwhile, the military wants to send a nuke and meanwhile, Cartman wants Kyle to suck his balls. Now, I will say it's kind of cool that if you freeze frame a lot, if you pause a lot, there's a lot of little nuggets of, oh, I know that, like in the light Easter eggs, a lot of recognizable characters. Uh, for example, as I was watching this episode, I can notice, of course, like Popeye has some good moments, which is cool because I'm a fan of Popeye. Uh, Jesus Christ cuts off Pinhead's head, <laughs> Pinhead from Hellraiser. You don't see that every day. But you pause and like one, I believe you see the back of a Ninja Turtle. Um, actually, I can't remember that was previous part of this part. Oh, the there's like one of the robots from the black hole is in one background shot. Uh, like little bits here and there. It's like, oh, I recognize that. And I recognize that. Like what some wide shots you see like a transformer and it's just kind of interesting like how many tears you're able to put in the background that you can notice. So pretty much throughout the gist of the episode there's a battle going on and the military is like I said going to nuke the land. I do like I mean I never thought I would say that I would see a scene where Popeye was fighting Darth Maul. And Khan from Star Trek 2. <laughs> but he does. And he gets some nice moments in. <clears throat> now we'll say. I guess it's a three parter. Something about it I didn't love as much as other people did. Like I didn't mind it for what it was. Um, I don't know if it needed three parts to be told. And. I don't know, it just it seemed like there's so many characters in the background that nobody, not many people can get much headway, not much room, not much moment to shine. And it was ambitious and trying almost to do too much. Like well, I mean, people may get mad at this, but I wish they would take out the whole fucking thing with Cartman wanting Kyle to suck in his balls. I know that's like the big running joke and people will disagree, but it just got old real fast. This was a running dad that was old by the time the first part of this three-parter. By the time that ended. Just more of him dressing up like the Pope and trying to get the camera. And then at the end of the episode, since he can imagine things, he imagines a version of himself and a version of Kyle doing it to that imaginary Cartman. Like I said, it's just, okay, I get it, but it just got old quick. And it just wasn't as funny to me as it, I guess it is to other people. They once again bring back Al Gore, because the man bear pig and making fun of him. Which again is ironic because now that we know that climate change is a bit of a reality, there's, there's a bit to it. Al Gore was not as full of shit as South Park things. So here they are bringing him up to make fun of him again. And I'm like, okay, I get that you don't like Al Gore, but again, what he said wasn't that far off. Just saying. To the point that fucking years and years later, they did an episode as much of an apology as they could in their version of apology. 
So I was like, oh god, you know, make you fun of Al Gore again. I didn't, just knowing that Al Gore actually had a decent point, just doesn't really look good in retrospect to do that. And I don't know, I guess I, for some reason, was expecting a bit more, I don't know what. Like, you build up all these characters, like these nine important characters in this group, and none, you don't really see Lou Skywalker do anything, you don't really see any of these other characters do much of anything, except, again, Jesus kills few, uh... Butters starts imagining like he brings back Santa Claus and he does some stuff. There's this joke where I guess there's this tartar creatures, gingivitis. So Butters has to think of like a tube of toothpaste that's alive and go and fight. I'm like, okay. I don't know, other than Butters. And some of the, oh, I recognize that character. I didn't. My favorite bit is Popeye fighting Darth Maul and Khan. And Popeye getting some love. Like, that was the best part of the episode to me. And so, if that's the case, then I don't know how I feel about it in terms of the humor or in terms of the other characters incorporated into it. Like, Stan, he pretty much is in that world and he gets found and brought back and them trying to convince Kyle you need to stop and then Kyle gets him to stop but then Al Gore treat him like an idiot shoots the newt anyway and it blows up everything but for some reason I don't know why Butters is still I guess because he's a T now as cool as a Butters fan that he gets his moment to shine and he brings everything back and becomes the savior it's nice being a fan of the character and at least at the end his mom with the shine. Then he gets found in the real world and his parents. Any way that Butters will be fucked up is because his parents are the worst piece of shit parents in this whole show. Even though all this is going on, you're grounded. There should be an episode where Butters kills his parents. And I wouldn't, I'd be like, you know what, I did it. That's what it should, there should be. If there has been an episode, there should be soon. Butters kills his parents. And maybe feeds him the Cartman. Just like Cartman fed, you know, how what Cartman did. Butters of Revenge kills his own parents and makes Cartman eat them. How's that? I mean, there you go. Well, it's not the same because it's not Cartman's mom. Yeah, I know, but maybe Car you know, you're still fucked with what Cartman said. I just, these parents are pieces of shit. And I know that's the point, but it's just, oh, it just annoy me. And then Butter says, oh, shit, at the end of it. Still feel bad for Butters. The whole stuff with the military, the man bear pit, and Al Gore was just tiresome because, again, it just doesn't hold up in retrospect. Because, again, Al Gore was kind of right. The... Cartman one of the balls it, like I say got old the idea is kind of interesting I mean I know they said they wanted it as a movie but okay if I looked at these three parts as a movie I definitely say that you know South part of the movie was better I know that's not fair that's a stupid comparison but I just eh. The idea and some of the nostalgia berries were more entertaining than the story and the comedy in itself. Deal with the characters. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, to be honest, I liked episode 13 more, which is a take on Guitar Hero. But what if the kids are playing Guitar Hero, the video game, and yet they go through all the cliche ups and downs of a rock band? And of a rock and roll star. I thought that was much more clever. I thought that was much more entertaining. I thought that was much more fun. Um, so I would say that one I liked more. Than honestly the Imagination Lane Trilogy. 
because yeah, Stan and Kyle doing the. I remember the Guitar Hero. I never played it, but I did see other people play it. I did like the joke where the dad Randy's like, "Well, I could play a real guitar. I could you teach you guys." Real guitars are for old people. That sucks. <laughs> and I, I just think it's funny because this is the ironic thing. Like, you spend all this time learning the guitar hero. You just spend all the time learning a real guitar. Uh, I get that point. And it is a pretty funny point. <laughs> like, you're, uh, you know. Although, I can't. I can't really say anything because I'd probably be in the same boat. If you're asking me would I rather play the game or learn a guitar, I probably would rather play the game. So I guess I'm in that boat. And so they're able to get this many thousands or hundreds of thousands of points and then a manager comes in. And then you get a million points in the bigger crowds within the game. But then, again, just the way they take the rock and roll storyline cliche and they prop it with the kids and the guitar hero was pretty entertaining. Like, for example, you have the cliche of, well, the two of you, one will work, but the other, not so quite. You'll need a new guy. So it's a new guy that got, like, hair over his eye and it's another kid. It's said, let's see what you can do. So the kid plays the guitar, but because it's a fake toy video game guitar, you just hear the... How do I put it? You just hear the... It's like standing up on like one leg on the table. like <laughs> You just hear this. And someone's like, I love that song. <laughs> I thought that was really clever. I thought that was really funny. Uh, like, that won me over. And that there's other video games like Hero Heroin Hero, which is you with a needle chasing a dragon, but you never catch him. Uh, and also, this has a lot of songs in it. I mean, they really went out with the songs. I mean, they got... I remember you, but da 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 da. I remember you. They got uh, every rose has its thorn, every night has its dawn, every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. See, I can't sing for shit, but it was kind of cool that they were able to. I just, you know, maybe a lot of people said yes because they're fans of the show and able yeah, to get the rights to it. But like I say, it was nice to hear so many songs in this small span of time. And how Stan is changing. It's like, do we play what I want to play? And as Heron uh, here when he's playing that, just the way they do the animation, I was getting more disheveled and more out of it. Getting all the cliches. Like, instead of drinking... Or you know, instead of actual drugs, is the <clears throat> <clears throat> even the bit where Stan buys a driving video game, and in the driving video game he has like a little steering wheel, and then he kind of stops it, and it's framed like how a real movie it'd be someone in a car wanting to turn back, but Stan kind of sitting there and turn his video game car back. I don't know how to explain, but just. Playing all the cliches, but in the ridiculousness of using the video game format, I thought it was really funny. It it, it brought a cliche story into a new satiric look at it, and I thought that was pretty clever. <clears throat> and of course, they do get back together, and they get the million points, and the game pretty much calls them... Well, I'm not going to repeat what they call them, but it starts with an F and an A and a G and an S. I'll put it that way. You you say it out loud if you want. I ain't. But yeah, that was pretty fun. That was definitely one of the better episodes of this season. Like I said, despite 
the Imagination Land, I know that got a lot of hype and hoopla. I actually enjoyed episode 13, the Guitar Hero one, a lot more. Not that I hated the, the other ones, but I, this is a very fun episode. So. And this time for a guy that never even played Guitar Hero myself. I've seen people play it. But because I remember that being so advertised when I was younger, you just say they even brought a bit of nostalgia back as well. Oh, fuck, I remember that. Just like there was also Rock Band and all the other stuff. So that was a fun episode. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.